Fam, what is cracking? It is your girl, Lillian Francis. I'm a music producer and educator, and it is my goal on this channel to make learning music production in Ableton Live chill and fun and easy. So welcome to my channel. So what I found is one of the easiest and honestly most fun ways to produce music is to take in samples that you get on like Splice or online or whatever, and just like put them together because you can make something really cool really fast. But the thing about doing that is you'll get sounds that everyone else has because everyone else has access to the same sounds. So what I want to do is show you guys some creative ways to take the samples that you might be downloading online and use them as kind of the starting point for something new. I also made a PDF with all the different techniques that we're going to be using today and it is linked below. So if you would like to check that out and have that as kind of a guide as you are creating your own unique samples, then go ahead and download that. All right, I think that's it. So let us dive right in. <gasps> Splash! All right, fam, welcome to my Proj Proj. We are kicking it in Ableton Live. One of my favorite ways to start a session is to just get inspiration. And the easiest way to do that is by finding some samples that spark joy or spark creativity and dragging them in and seeing what I can do to play around with them. So you might already have a place where you get samples from. Spice is one that a lot of people get them from, freesamples.com. I don't know, is that a thing? So I have every single free pack downloaded in Ableton. I like to just open up random folders and see what's inside. So that's what I can do now. I'm going to sift through some of my packs and I'm gonna find a couple drum loops and melodic loops that inspire me and see where we can go from there. So let's check it out. Okay, I got very carried away with myself. Let's stop ourselves. All right, let's get into it. Let's get this acid techno thing over here and see what we can do with it. To start out with, here are a couple different ways we can take this drum loop and not use it precisely, but use different elements of it. So either we can use the sounds of it or the groove of it. So let's start out by using the groove. But what we can do is right click here and say, convert drums to new MIDI track. And Ableton will try to analyze the drum pattern and then turn it into a MIDI clip. So let's hear how well it did. Not bad. Obviously, their sounds way fucking cooler <laughs> than what Ableton did here, but that's why we now want to go in and replace these sounds. Let's find a different kit to replace it with. That's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and just drag and drop this on top of the instrument and then it will swap out. Cool. Obviously, we can go ahead and keep changing up the sounds. I also wanna bring up this kick. And I'm gonna just switch up stair pattern a little bit for the ones that aren't like on the two and the four. I'm just gonna select them, just holding down shift as I do this, and let's move them to a different snare. How's that? Boom. All right, so now I have basically adopted <laughs> the groove. This is a fun way when you like the beat, but you don't want to use it exactly. Another thing we can do is if we like the sounds of these guys, but maybe we wanna change up the beat. We can also do the good old right click, slice to new MIDI track. And this will give me the option to create one slice per whatever we wanna do. So we can do transient, uh, which would make probably the most sense with this one because we have pretty clearly defined transients and these will really separate out the notes and hit okay. All right, now we've got this guy. So what Ableton has done is it has taken our clip, it has sliced our sounds at the transient, and then it has put these slices into a drum rack. So we have so one of the first things I'd probably do is just rename a couple of these so we actually know what's happening. So this would be like a shaker, we'll call that a hat, snare, kick. So I'll go and delete until I have like a kick, snare, and a hi-hat, just somewhere to start at. And then I can delete this clip that it made for me and let's just make a new clip. So I'm gonna select an amount of time that I want. This is gonna be one bar. I can hit Shift Command M to create that new MIDI track and I need a better color. I need more pink and purple in my life. All right, great. And now I can start programming something in, right? The 
fun thing about doing this is that you have all these different slices to choose from. So if one sound, you're like, ah, eh, you just go to the next, the next, especially if you do this with like live drums or something, then you're gonna get a bunch of like slightly different snare sounds and slightly different kicks. And then when you put them all together, it's like very dynamic in a way that feels realistic. I always end up coming up with something cool when I use this technique, so give it a shot. All right, now I'm gonna pull in a percussion loop. I love grabbing percussion loops from my sample library and then working with the warp mode to create something interesting. So first off, it's fun to just fuck with the pitch. If you have a sample, try repitching it up an octave and see how it sounds. Cool, try pitching it down an octave, see how it sounds. Weird. And once we have it warped up an octave, down an octave, however you wanna do it, um, that's when we really start to hear the differences in warp mode. So right now, like beats warp mode sounds like this. And that's beats warp mode on transients. But what if I switch it over to be like an eighth note or a 16th note transient? Weird. Look, we can bring on the fade to make it a little bit more rhythmic. And this sounds kind of weird. Something I could do, hit command J. And then now you can see where it has actually bumped things. So we can go from here, use our warp markers to move things around in a way that sounds a little bit more pleasing. So maybe if I snap them to the grid a little bit more. Okay, now I'm just gonna start kind of like chopping it up a little bit and just seeing if we can play around and get kind of a cool rhythm to happen. Let's look at another example with another percussion loop and try to do kind of a similar, but maybe different thing. For this one, let's stay in beats warp mode for now. I'm just gonna switch the preserve to be a one and done kind of situation. So when we bring down this little fade, it's gonna create these like Already sounds different, sounds cool. We can pitch it up a little bit. Ooh, you could do something cool with this too and have them like differently transposed. So like this one could be just the normal transposition and this one, maybe we pitch it down like three semitones. So it's almost like a melodic rhythmic element. Let's try this out. <laughs> and then we can further alter like certain sections of this drum loop, right? Like maybe we take this section and I just get a command E to split it and I'm going to reverse it. There we go. We can take certain sections and make them like speedier. Like maybe this section will get really speedy by hitting this divide by two button. That doesn't really sound good. Let's times it by two. Maybe I'll switch to a different warm mode. Oh, and let's do the same thing for this one actually too. So they kind of like match. And maybe we'll switch it to texture mode. Yeah. And actually this one, I'm going to make it a little bit longer by holding down shift and dragging it out. That sounds kind of cool. So we will leave it at that. But the point of this is have fun with your warp modes. Have fun with transposition, with reversing. Have fun by going into your clip and moving around warp markers as you feel fit because this can lead to some really kind of cool, weird shit. Also, especially if you put it on repitch mode. Let's do this. All right, now I'm just fucking around, but you get it. There's a lot of fun to be had and you can come up with some really weird ideas this way. I would truly love to know what is your favorite way to use samples in uh, your own kind of creative, unique way. So please drop a comment below, let me know. And if you make anything cool using these techniques, please do some in my way. You can find me on Instagram at Lillian Francis. And I love hearing from you guys. Also, if you have any cues about what I said, what I did, you want any clarification, anything like that, feel free to shoot me a DM there as well. That is all for today, folks. It has been my pleasure. I'll see you next time. Bye.